YouTube, what is going on? It is your boy Ron Real, aka Double R in the building. Back with another video, back with another banger. Hey, today we got another, another special treat for you guys. I'm telling you, we're going all across the world for this one. We got a special treat for you guys. We're gonna be pairing the El Dorado Special Reserve 15 year rum at a Guyana, South America. And we're gonna be pairing that with a Manalik made by Foundation Cigars and Nick Melillo over there. Y'all hang tight, stay tuned, and we'll get to this pairing. All right, so got a very nice pairing we got set up for you guys today. First, we'll talk about the rum, which is the El Dorado Special Reserve 15 year. Got this bottle a couple weeks ago. It ran me around $60 for this fifth. It's produced out of Guyana, which is a country in South America. It's very, very good. I've been drinking on it for, like I was just saying, a couple of weeks, and I've been very impressed with it, and I knew as soon as I had a taste of it, I figured this would go really, really well with a nice cigar. So. I figured this would this would be perfect pairing for this cigar. This is not an añejo rum, but it's still considered an aged rum. It, I'll get into the differences of differences of that once I have an actual añejo rum. I'll talk to you guys more about that. But as far as the cigar, this is brought to us by Nick Melillo and Foundation Cigar Company. This is called the Menelik, which means son of the wise man. This was a special. Uh, release cigar for event only. This is an event only cigar you could get when he had events around the country and things like that for, you know, the Die Hard Foundation people. This was like his special cigar that ended up by popular demand becoming regular production. So very special cigar. I've smoked quite a few of these since they come out earlier this year. They came out at the uh, the IPCPR this year. So, but this is a four and a half by 52 ring gauge cigar. It has a uh, Mexican San Andreas wrapper, a Nicaraguan Corojo binder, and it has fillers from Nicaragua too. As you see, this one has a nice pigtail on it too, just kind of really classic looking. Has tight invisible seams on this one too. There are some veins, but they're very minimal. This is a, a very nice looking cigar. Really neat cap on it too. I'm gonna go ahead and say it right now. It says a 52 ring gauge. I've had this cigar in my humidor for probably on the closer end of two months and I can already tell just by how the band shifting that it's probably lost some some uh, girth to it. This will be an opportunity for me to be able to use this little useless gadget I got. This is a cigar or this is a cigar tape by Herrix. It's, it allows you to measure the length of the cigars and the ring gauge too so it was kind of a useless thing I bought. I just figured it'd just be something kind of cool to have around as I'm doing reviews and stuff like this so but if I were to guess, I'm gonna go, this is probably gonna be closer to 49 or 50. I feel like it's probably lost that much from being in my humidor. And that could be probably due to, you know, um, a lot of people use the 70-70 method as far as keeping their humidors at 70 degrees temperature wise and then they keep their humidity at 70 as well too. Well, I usually like mine around 65, 66, so I usually keep my humidors uh, pretty cool. So that could be why the cigar kind of you know, tightened up a little bit. I'll show you guys the tape. You'll be able to see the diameter on it. So it's measuring right around 50, even though it's uh, it's told to us that it's 52, which it could have been a 52 uh, when it first was produced, but it's lost a little bit, but hey, it happens. I've had cigars too that they say that they're a certain length and they'll be shorter too. Actually, before I cut it, we'll see how, see if it's true to the uh, to the length of it. Just a hair shy of four and a half. So yeah, the cigar's probably drawn up a little bit from being in the uh, the humidor. So we'll go ahead and cut it up. As you guys will see, I'll show you the pigtail. It's kind of cool how that looks. See the little cap, how it came off. So the I smoked about four or five of these already. I would definitely say this is a medium to full body and flavor cigar. Medium to full all the way around. Pretty Pretty good strength on this thing too, so. This is uh, something I probably wouldn't recommend for like beginners or anybody like that, but definitely if, if you're up for the challenge, this is this is definitely a, a nice, strong cigar. Price point on this one was around $13. So it's not really, it's actually 
pretty expensive for a, a pretty much a Robusto size cigar. It's not cheap. Immediately out the gate, heavy dose of, uh, through the retro hill, a, a heavy dose of black pepper, heavy on earth, heavy on dark, or uh, black coffee immediately. Immediately, full, medium to full immediately. It's just, as soon as you take a puff of it, you can just tell yeah, this isn't a quote unquote rookie cigar. You can just tell. Yeah, dark, uh, dark chocolate is a little bit in there too. It's, tastes very good already. Now, as far as the rum, not really too much coming off of it. Can definitely tell it's probably, which is a good thing. I don't think there's really any sugar added to this one, or if it is, you can tell it's very minimal. Some some rums you'll get and you'll smell is just just overwhelmingly sweet. This one's not it. Could smell like molasses, a little bit of like a oak wood, like some wood notes, a very faint banana sweetness on the back of it. Not bad. Actually has some deep, pretty decent legs too. And for being a 15 year old, I can I can believe that. That's that's a really good sign there. Pretty true to the nose. Heavy molasses, heavy wood. There's a citrus flavor in there too. It's not not like the banana on the nose. It's, it's, I can't really put my finger on it, but it's definitely a citrus note. Finish is not that long though. It's, it's, I would say probably a light to medium finish. So I'm gonna keep on smoking. I'm gonna smoke through this first third, see what we got going on. So y'all hang tight, stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, so we've been smoking for about 20 minutes. Everything's going just fine. Cigars performing beautifully. You see the razor sharp burn line. Construction has been pretty good. Although I'll say the draw is a, a tad bit tighter than I would normally like, but it's still it's not affecting anything. Rum has been good too. So far, I would say this, that this is a very, very good pairing. It's not elite. Everything is intensified for sure. This is definitely a dark note pairing, like wood, dark coffee, chocolate. This cigar isn't really it isn't really as creamy, and the smoke is is I would say even though it's this is definitely a or medium to full strength. I feel like the, the smoke is kind of light. And even you can even look at it like now, it's not really a lot of foot smoke coming off. The, the smoke is very, I guess thin is a bad word, but it's, it's, it's not like paper thin, but it's definitely not like really creamy and not really dense. And then the rum is having that kind of same problem as far as the finish not being very long. And I think that if the rum's finish was a little bit longer, that would help with the flavors a little bit and probably boost this parent to an elite parent. But hey, no complaints at all. I'm enjoying this cigar. Like I said, it's burning and going smoothly. The rum is tasting good. That's about the only knock I would give on the rum. I wish the, the finish was a little longer. Right now, still around a medium, medium to full kind of as far as the strength. No real complaints about this. You know, I guess a person could complain that this would be being almost a $14 cigar for a Robusto, which Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of that either, but most people that smoke foundation cigars will know that they're they're really not that cheap. You know, you smoke Tabernacles or Wise Man's and things like that. They're gonna be, there are some Wise Man Vitolas that are 10 or $11, but like the Lanceros that I like, like the Tabernacles and the uh, Wednesdays and things like that, those are 13, $14 cigars. But you, you'll never be able to complain about the construction. The flavors are always there and usually the strength is always there too. So for me, I don't mind paying a little bit extra, especially if there's some strength involved with it too. As far as the rum, yes, it's a $55, $60 bottle, but when you're comparing it to, you know, something like a Bacardi or some bullshit like that, 30, 25, $30, it's when you taste them side by side, you know, it, you'll be able to tell the difference immediately. So you're paying for the quality of a product as I feel like comparing it as far as a person that might be wanting quantity, like, oh, I could get three or four bottles for that price. Yes, but, when you buy this one bottle compared to those two bottles, this one tastes better. It's just a, it, there's a lot more depth and flavors. Same thing with these cigars too. Even though not only in all, not all the time that the price doesn't mean, in, especially in cigars, price doesn't necessarily mean better because there are really are a, a lot of really good seven, eight dollar cigars out there that outperform 15, 20 dollar cigars. Better flavor, more strength. So, but foundation is usually really, really good about this. So I have no complaints with this. And then of course the cigar is limited. Not only that, you know, even though they made it into like regular production, he still doesn't like, he's still not pushing out like 50 or 50 or 100,000 cigars a year. This is, even though it's regular production, it's still, I think he's, he's doing a thousand boxes of 12s, like in quarters and quarters and things like that. So it's still not something that you'll walk in any given cigar store and find. I think that now you're able to see them a little bit more, but even locally for me, I only know one spot that has them. And then when I checked the last time, they only had the one box of 12. So there's no telling when they'll get another box of that in or if they even will. So you got to take that for what it's worth. But overall, first third, 
very good no complaints i'm enjoying it so i'm gonna keep on smoking through this second third y'all hang tight stay tuned all right here we go this cigar picked up right when it needed to i'm sure you can already tell smoke quality has went up the creaminess has went up the mouth is medium to full as far as body now this is definitely picked up strength is picked up to a medium to full this is what i'm talking about now we in the game john now we in the game everything is is honing in now rum is getting better bumping up just a little bit more so it's almost as if right when i ended the first or the uh the first third is literally right when that camera cut off i picked the cocoa or the uh coca started picking up too and then it just got way more creamy way more dense i was like yes there that's what i'm talking about this is this is the money this is where the money is made right here so we're gonna get ready for that cigar snob moment y'all know what time it is we're gonna get this marriage going and see what we got Yeah, that strength kick picked up and I was like, yes, that's that's what I'm looking for. Smoke has gotten way more dense. That's a proper marriage there. Look at that. Let that hang around for a minute. Be a little snobbish asshole for a second. Nothing, no new flavors, but intensity is just shot through the roof. Second third has definitely helped this pairing way, way up. So the second third didn't take as much time as the first third. It's not really a long cigar, so it's about time to take the band off now, so I'm sure I'll be seeing you guys in just a minute to uh, wrap this up, give you guys some points, give you a full breakdown, so y'all hang tight, stay tuned. I'm gonna get through this back third. Probably got about another five minutes, cigar starting to get a little hot, so I'm gonna probably get a few more draws off of it in between, the, you know, talking a little bit and probably be done with it. Cigar ended up out, outshining the rum, which isn't, isn't bad because I feel like for me personally in pairings, I want the cigar to kind of shine and I want the spirit to kind of help accent it. I don't want the spirit to take over the cigar. For me, the cigar should be the show, the uh, star of the show. And that's what this did. I would say the cigar by itself is an elite cigar. Again, we'll run over the price point, $13. Mexican San Andreas wrapper, Nicaraguan Corojo binder, Nicaraguan filler. Very, very good. The draw even improved as the, you know, from the second, third on, the draw got perfect right where I liked it at. Smoke quality picked up. Everything was right there. Elite cigar for me. I will give this cigar by itself a 92 out of 100, 9.2 out of 10, whichever way you want to look at that. Medium to full on body, flavor, and strength. Medium to full. Probably if you don't have anything on your stomach, it could, it could be one of those cigars that could get ugly for you if you're not used to stronger cigars. The rum by itself, very, very good, especially for the price point. The only rums under, are around the $60 and under that I would probably prefer over it would be the Don Q and Yeho Rum or the Plantation 20th Anniversary. Those would probably be the only two I would pick up before this one. Very, very good. I don't, I'm gonna have to do some reading on it. I don't think that much sugar was added to it. It didn't taste overly sweet, which I prefer. I don't like my rums really, really sweet. Flavors were good. The only thing I wish that the finish would last a little bit longer so, but still a very, very good rum. Overall, I would give the score on this one probably a 87 out of 100, 8.7 out of 10. Very, very good rum. Together, I'm gonna give this pairing an 89. 89 out of 100, very, very good, not elite. Wasn't any new flavors being brought on, but the, but the flavors were very, very uh, intense, especially pairing them together. Again, you're gonna get uh, dark chocolate, dark coffee, oak wood. With the rum, you'll have a little bit of that molasses sweetness in there, which helps with the cigar. Very, 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 very good. Really enjoyed this pairing. Only rum I would probably think that would probably pair, the, the, the Don Q would probably be around the same pairing wise. I think the Plantation 20th and the Zacapa XO probably would be the only two rums I think would pair better with a cigar like this. But overall, enjoyed the experience, very good. I'm gonna enjoy these last few minutes of this cigar. With that being said, if you have not smoked the Manalik, I definitely would recommend picking it up. Or if you haven't smoked any foundation cigars, highly recommend them they're a little on the on the pricier side if you're used to spending like seven eight dollars a cigar you're probably going to at least have to spend ten eleven dollars to start getting into like the wise man tabernacles things like that a huge fan of nick melillo you know he used to work with drew estate him and steve Saka were or were a couple of the heads behind the famous liga nine t52 all those those great cigars so again highly recommend foundation cigar company thank you guys for tuning in appreciate all the new subscribers that have been tuning in a lot more comments lately. I, man, that's, that's, that's just driving me to keep making more and more content. I'm really, really enjoying this deal. Look forward to making more videos. Look forward to the channel growing. 
look forward to gaining more subscribers to join the family man and y'all know with that being said y'all know the name of the game relaxation and enjoyment and y'all know be driven never motivated we'll catch y'all on the next one